day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast Tinkercad tutorial. So let's get cracking. Today, friends, we're going to do something a little bit different. I have made a Detroit Lions keychain. That video will be at the end of this video. Let me show you how we're going to mod it to work with the Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer. So the first step I want to show you is I don't want to wreck anything I've already built, so I'm going to duplicate that project. It is right here, so now I can click on it and I can do Tinker This. Now when it loads, you can see I have been fiddling around with it. I've already made some modifications. I'm going to set this back to the basic settings for building. I'm going to go to the normal background color and I'm going to turn on the grid so that way you can see our parts. The steps at the end of this video are going to show you how to take any image and export it as separate parts that you can bring into Tinkercad to help us create epic multicolor keychains. We are going to accomplish that with the incredibly powerful and free Inkscape. Before we get to those steps though, I'm going to show you how to make this thing look pretty awesome using Bamboo Lab Studio. Let me show you the parts of this project. You can see we've got a hole. If I double click, that is simply the keychain hole. Now when I click outside the box, it regroups. We have also got this layer, which is the outline of the lions. And then we've got another part that we call lions details. These all had the default fill mode. This will give us three heights. You can see the keychain base is two. We have these details at 1.6 millimeters. And we have the outline at two. Having those three steps makes the next part super slick. So right now, we're going to simply hit export. And we're going to have all three of those as a STL. I have named it Detroit Lions Keychain. I already hit save, so I'm just going to hit cancel on that screen, and let's move to the Bamboo Lab Studio. All right, friends, so let me show you the two ways that we can make this. First, I'm going to add the single keychain with the three different heights. Notice this comes in as one color. I do have my four colors, blue, white, silver, and black loaded, and we are going to paint. When we go to the painting, I kept the bottom blue. I'm going to switch to fill and black to do the outside edge. Notice it only takes one click and it's going to leave those edges blue. That makes the whole process a lot faster. If you wanted, you could paint each of those edges. It does take a while to select them. I'm going to take this piece and paint it silver. Just switch into the silver. Notice I missed. So I'm going to do control Z. Make sure I get on top, and silver, and silver. And I want to make the eye white just to see how it works. There really won't be a ton of difference, but that is how you can build it by painting. Of course, once you have the paint job done, you simply hit Slice All. And after just a moment, you can hit Print Plate. Notice this is going to take about 28 minutes, and I can simply send it to the printer. It does not recognize the filaments because I just added these and they are generic filaments, but I'm gonna hit confirm and let it roll. All right, everybody, it's draft day. Detroit Lions keychain, painted using Bamboo Studio. How cool is that? Returning quickly to Tinkercad, let me show you option two. I am going to click on a single shape and I'm going to export just that shape. Once again, I'm choosing STL, and I'm going to call this one the base. So I did this for the base, I did it for the details, and I did it for the outline. So I've got three separate parts that I exported. Now let's return to Bamboo Studio, and I'll show you how that turns out differently. Now, friends, let's bring in the second version of the project. Notice the first one, all the pieces had different heights, now I'm going to grab the three separate STLs and I'm going to open them. I will load them as a single object, multiple parts. They are stacked the exact way I wanted. And this time I'm going to do the colors over here. If you're in global mode, of course, switch to object mode. Click on the one that you want to color. This is the base. I do want to keep it blue, which is fine. I'm going to go to the second one, which is this outline right here. And I'm going to choose to make it silver. So I'm going to number three. I'm going to click on this one right here. And I'm going to make it black. Once again, a couple clicks and choose black. 
And then I want to actually paint the eye separate, so I'm showing you we can do both strategies. So now I can click on that object. Let's choose paint. I'm going to select the white again. I've still got the fill from the earlier one. And now that edge has got the filled color. If I wanted, I could go all the way around so that entire piece was painted with the white as well. Let me show you one other sweet trick you can use here. I'm going to take this one and actually print it with the silver. And then on top, I'm going to paint it with the black fill. That'll even give it a cooler look. So there you have it, friends. Simple techniques to make an awesome, colorful NFL logo keychain using your Bamboo Labs 3D printer. All right, friends. So here we have version two, and there's version one. Notice this one, we only painted the top edges. That one, we painted the lines all the way through. All right, so now you know how it looks when it's printed. Check out these steps for how to build your very own. Of course, you can do this with any team. First, do a search. Find an image that you like. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to choose to do a screen capture of it. Simply grab the area I care about. Notice I missed a little bit of the tail. I love being able to adjust that with Snagit, which is from TechSmith. And then finally, I'm going to bring it in just like that. I'm going to quickly copy this image and take it to Pixlr. Real quickly, I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to use that art grid, choose create, and do control V to paste. Now, I don't want the background, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the cutout. And let's first try this AI cutout. Let's see if it gets it. Holy cow, it did. It missed this chunk, but watch this. If I go to keep and paint, shut off the softness, check it out. I can easily keep those areas in just a second. Notice it did miss an area there, but it's that easy to get the exact image that we wanted. I see one back here that I missed, but I'm going to have to make this smaller. Just do another quick look around, make sure I got everything I want. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to hit close on that tool, switch to crop, bring this across, and finally, hit apply and let's hit save so we can use this in our other project i am going to stay with a png put it in the downloads and i'm going to call it lions and i'll add the word logo just to keep track and save friends our next tool is inkscape once you get it open i'm going to do file import there is our logo i'm going to keep the default settings choose ok control and the mouse lets it zoom out and then we want to launch the trace bitmap tool now i already had it over here but once you get it in we're going to play with some settings notice currently it is not detecting this outside i'm going to try the multicolor and bingo there is the entire shape i'm going to simply hit apply and check it out just like that. We've got another image that we can work with to try and make our keychain. I'm going to click on this one and hit delete. I'm going to go to this one and we're going to do path. And we are going to break it apart. Notice it says there are no paths. So I'm going to do object ungroup instead. Now I'm going to explode all of this again with that path. Break apart. Now if we look close there are some pieces here that I don't want. Let me show you a quick way to get rid of those. So if we go to layers, I'm going to find some main layers and I'm going to hide them. So I want path one, so I'm going to hide it. I want these shapes, path eight, so I'm going to hide it. I'm going to click out here on the outside edge, path 32. Let's see if it's really the right one. Yes, it was. It was perfect. Let's click on this one. It's called path four and let's hide it. Let's click on this one, and I want to keep it, so I'm going to hide it. Click out here on this one, and hide, and hide, and hide. I'm going to do a little control zoom. This stuff was all garbage, so I'm going to grab all of those paths. Notice these did not get selected, and I'm going to hit delete. Now I can come back to my other pieces and I can bring them all back. 
and we can start to make our awesome keychain. Let's begin by clicking out here on the outside path, which is path four. And I'm going to make it blue. So I'm right clicking on the blue and I'm setting the stroke. Just makes it cooler to see. And then I'm going to hide it so it's not selected anymore. Now I'm going to select this path. Notice it's path 32. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to get this path. Notice it's path one. And then I also want this paw. Hold down shift. And it's path 10. I'm going to take those three and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group them. So now they are one piece. Notice they're called group 187. I am not gonna change the color on that, but I am gonna hide it. And then finally, we're gonna grab these pieces right here. And I'm gonna right click and make them a group as well. And now I can bring everything back for exporting. Exporting works just like this. Notice I'm on path four, which is the outline. I'm gonna switch to the file export tool. I need to make sure I have it set as a plain SVG. Notice it auto switched, so I'm going to do it again. I only want the selected piece. I want to pick my folder. And I'm going to export that as the lion's back. Now the process continues. I'm going to click on the inside chunk. Once again, I'm going to export it as an SVG selected only. And I'm going to call this Lion's Keychain Outline. And once again, export. And then finally, we're going to click on the inside and we're going to export again. This one is going to be Details. And I'm going to hit Save. And they're ready to bring into Tinkercad. Friends, now we import those pieces. When we choose a file, make sure you find the three of them. This is the whole project. So we want the back, the outline, and the details. When you click on it, it'll say, holy crap, it's large. We'll say, yes, fine. And then I'm going to choose to make this quite a bit smaller. I'm going to go 40%. When I type in a scale of 40%, you can see it's still 220 centimeters. That's way too large. I'm going to try 20. That's even larger than I like. I'm going to try 10%. That's a little bit smaller than I like. I like the number 70 right here. So I'm going to choose 15 and I'm going to call that good. Now we need to use that percent again and again. So that way all of our pieces match. So I've got my logo. I'm going to make the quality better. I'm going to change the height to two millimeters thick. I like that for my keychains. And then I'm going to pick a custom blue. Now I want to get really close to a lion's blue, so I'm going to go out here and fiddle with it. I think that is pretty darn awesome. Of course, you can use the codes. Notice if we look down here, you could paste in the exact code for the Detroit Lions Honolulu Blue by just tracking it down on the internet. Let's import the next piece. Choose File, and we want that lion's outline. Art, and remember it was 15% and choose import. After a moment it arrives, I'm gonna shift select the two, choose L for a line, make this one the boss, and let's snap it, pop, pop. You can see that fits absolutely awesome. I do wanna put it on top. I'm gonna to do that with the work plane and D for drop. Change the thickness, I'm gonna make this two and press enter. I'm also gonna pick a cool gray once again, just go out here and find your color or use the presets. Don't forget you can use that code again and again. I'm actually going to copy that right now so I can use it on the next one. Final part, friends. This time I'm going to go ahead of the game. I want it on top of that work plane. Notice my work plane is not visible. That is because I shut it off a moment ago. Now you can see it's going to drop right there. And then here is import. Choose file. Find those details art 15 percent and hit import there are the cool details move them into place remember that color i copied and pasted it so i can get the exact gray and then i can make these a different thickness so it has kind of a cool texture let's do 1.5 for that i do need to hit d to drop and get it back up where it's supposed to be and then drag those eyes and details where they need to be Finish by putting the work plane back on the ground. And of course, I want to click on settings. 
and I want to shut off that grid because it looks so much cooler. The final step is to put a hole for your keychain. I'm going to do my hole back here in this leg. I am going to use shift to stretch and type the number five. That is the keychain hole size that I use the most. Pick the location and finally take my entire project and do control G to group it. Congratulations, you've just used Inkscape and Tinkercad to make an epic multicolor keychain. Real quickly, we can make those colors show up by simply clicking multicolor. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to take a moment to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. As you can tell, I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing lessons. Down below, you can find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. Friends, below that, you'll find the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I do also need to highlight the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.